Among some of the more exciting features like dynamic topology and rigid bodies in Blender 2.66, we also have a ton of UI and usability improvements. So these are things like you know improvements to the interface, improvements to our general workflow, and making sure that the users are happy when working in Blender. So first of all, um, something that impacts me directly that I particularly love, uh, but maybe not it won't impact a lot of people, is Retina display support. So if you're working on a high pixel density display, such as the Retina MacBook Pro or the 13-inch MacBook Pro. I, I don't know of any other Retina displays right now, but I believe these are the only ones. But we now have native support for high-resolution displays. And so even though you can't see it here, um, you, you may notice that Blender looks a little bit crisper and things are really nice. And if we go in and just look at a sample, I've put a, together a comparison between these two. And let me just scale this up so you can really see it. But if you look in here, on the left is the Retina Display Blender. On the right is Regular Blender. And if you look, you can see that the icons are really nice and sharp. They're really crisp. There's no pixelation, really. The text is really, really clear. And so Blender on a Retina Display is just absolutely gorgeous. So those of you that are working on uh, you know, the new Retina MacBook Pro or the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Retina Display uh, will really, really love this because it's really a great improvement. And, you know, most importantly, the basically all the icons are double sized now. They've all been vectorized and are just really, really gorgeous. So that's a small thing. But for those of you on the, the machines will really appreciate it. The next thing that we have is something that a lot of people have been calling for a long time, and that is non-overlapping panels. So currently, the toolbar and the viewport properties overlap. So you notice that when I activate them, it pushes the 3D view aside. And this is, you know, not a big thing, but it's really annoying kind of because, you know, when you open a panel, if let's say you're doing something right here and then you open the panel accidentally, suddenly your whole thing has been shifted and it just kind of breaks your focus. Well, now we have a non-overlap feature. So if you go into your user preferences, into the system tab, you can see region overlap. So if you just enable region overlapping, then go back to the 3D view and hit in, you'll notice that the panel just fades in and doesn't um, move things aside anymore. So now it's just overlapping. You also notice that with region overlap, there's a slight transparency here. So now these panels are actually transparent, giving us an even nicer interface that some of us really like. Now this transparency is completely controllable. So again, if you just go into the user preferences, and actually, I should note, in the case that you don't have this feature, it's due to not being supported by your graphics card. So if this feature is not supported on your machine, then it's not going to show. And that's, I believe, just in the rare case of some particularly older, like integrated graphics cards and such. So unfortunately, if you don't see this in Blender 2.66, it's simply not supported on your machine. But most machines should have no problem with it. So, but if you want to adjust the transparency of these panels, you can simply go into the themes section, into the 3D view view, scroll down, and then you can find the, uh, let's see, I believe it's the theme panel color right here. Uh, no, that's not the one. Let's see, ah, region background potentially. Yes. So the region background, if you just adjust the alpha slider here, you can see the transparency getting less and less or more and more. So you can adjust that transparency any way that you wish to then, you know, fine tune it to your liking, which then jumps right into the next usability topic that I want to talk about. And that is split user preferences. So many of you may know that if you wanted to adjust your default settings in Blender, whether that was your theme, your hotkeys, your default layouts, anything like that, you had to do it in a new scene because you would create a new scene and then you would hit control U and save your startup file after saving everything. And the reason you had to do this in a new file was that if you had any model loaded here, such as if I added a Suzanne, and I click save user settings, it would save that as my default scene. And that would also save my preferences, which is still the case. So if I save this and then start a new file, it'll say it'll open exactly like this. But hitting Control U no longer saves my user preferences because these have now been split apart and are now a separate setting. And so save user settings is no longer the same thing as file save startup file. So these have now changed. And this is really great because it allows you to be working on your scene. You're making lots of cool objects. In this case, I'm making a monkey that I didn't do anything with. I just added. Uh, but then I realized while working on it, man, I would really love to have a new hotkey for, say, smooth shading. So maybe I go in, I create a hotkey for enabling smooth shading, and then I can simply click save user settings. 
And previously, it would save my entire config, including the file that I had loaded to be my new startup file. But now it simply saves the user preferences, not the actual startup file. So now when you're working, you can go in, make any changes here you want, click save user settings, and you're good to go. So this is a massive improvement. Uh, and frankly, is actually even beyond things like dynamic topology, which I absolutely love. As far as a usability standpoint, this is one of the best features Blender's had in years. Uh, this is something that, you know, should have been, you know, we probably should have had a really long time ago, but, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of myself and you know i'm just grateful that we have it now because it's really really great it really improves the usability of blender and uh you know kudos to the developers for getting it added the next thing that i want to talk about is keep session so this is another really good usability improvement that helps us out a lot and if any of you have ever gone and you're working on blender and you're hitting Control w to save your file and you know just through muscle memory you hit Control w and then left click since blender automatically pops up the menu you've probably once or twice hit control Q instead and just immediately quit Blender and lost your work. I think this is something that we've all probably done once or twice and it's really a pain, particularly when you lose work. Well, now Blender has a new option where in the file settings, if you click keep session, now the moment that you quit Blender, and I'll just save my user settings, if I keep keep session, as soon as I quit Blender, it's going to save out a quit file and then reload that upon starting. So if I just quit Blender and then reload it, it's automatically going to load up that same file. Now you'll notice that it doesn't look like it really loaded, but since I have my cube was a little bit offset, it's actually loaded up my exact same file and we're good to go. So this is a really, really great feature inside file. Keep session such that if you ever accidentally quit and then want to reopen, you're going to have all of your exact work immediately where you quit. Now, one thing to note, this does not account for crashes. So if Blender actually crashes, it's not going to save out that file. It's only if the user actually quits Blender. The next thing that we've got is really, really cool. And it's kind of along the same lines as far as, you know, enabling you between instances and things like that. And that is copy and paste. So let's say, for example, I've got all of these objects and maybe I've worked a long time with them. And then I realized, you know what? Let's add in a new scene. And I want these same objects in the exact same position to be right there. And, you know, let's just for a moment forget about the fact that we can link objects. Let's just say I want to copy and paste them. Well, we now have a new option on a Mac. It's Command C and Command V. On Windows or Linux, it's going to be Control C and Control V. So I can just hit Command C, copy selection to a buffer, switch over to my new scene, hit Command V, and paste the selection from a buffer. And it just pastes them in the exact same position. This works for nodes, it works for objects, works for lamps, all those different things uh, works really, really well. But you know what, let's give you a better example. Rather than doing a scene, because we already know that that works, let's grab all these objects and hit Command C, copy them to a buffer. Let's now go up to File, Quit Blender, and then let's simply reload it delete all of these, command V, paste the selection, and there we go. So we can paste to and from different instances of Blender. We can paste, quit, and then, or excuse me, we can copy, quit, and then paste again. And so it's actually saving them into the memory such that then we can access them again. So particularly if you don't want to use, say, like file to link or pin, you want to just copy one model from one, one instance of Blender to another, this is how you can do it, and it works really nicely. Moving on, we've got another great um, UI thing in Blender 2.66 that's uh, very appreciated. And that again is in the 3D view or in the user preferences under themes. And that is a background in the 3D view. So let's just hide all this so we can kind of see what's going on here. And if we just scroll down here in the 3D view section, we now have show background color and use gradient. So if I enable use gradient, it shows a gradient in the 3D view and I can set the low color and I can set the high color. And this is really, really nice, particularly because it can just help give a little bit better sense of depth within the 3D view and is just a visual thing. You know, it doesn't have any impact on your actual um, productivity or anything like that. Of course, it's just merely a nice UI thing for improving the user experience within Blender. And lastly, in Blender, we have matcap support. So if you do a lot of sculpting or anything like that, and want to show off the surface of your model in various um, under various lighting and materials and things like that to really kind of judge the quality of your material. We now have a new option here. And again, I'm just going to view a line view to my selection. 
I don't have a full keyboard right now, that's why I can't do it. Uh, and I just go in here. Underneath the display section, we have a new option called Matte Cap. And if I just enable this, it immediately turns my object into a matte cap display to show it. And a matte cap is basically just a circular or a basically a rendered sphere with the material applied that we want. And then it basically just maps this shader to the normals of our surface. And so now I can go in here, I can choose from the different matte caps we have. You can see that we've got 24 matte caps included in Blender. We don't currently have the ability to define custom matte caps, but in the near future, we probably will. I know that that's being worked on. Uh, and so these are really, really nice for kind of demoing the surface under different lighting environments to see how it's uh, being affected, how, you know, different cavities and, uh, you know, peaks and things like that uh, react under different lighting, you know, reflections with soft lighting, etc. And so this is just really, really good for demoing your surface and particularly for showing off your model to whether it's a potential client, a friend, yourself, or whoever that may be. Matte caps can be really good for displaying the surface of your model. And that's it for the UI and usability stuff in Blender 2.66. We've got a lot of different improvements and uh, really, you know, a really great release. There's a lot of other little things in 2.66. I encourage you to check out the release notes for the complete list of usability stuff. There was a lot of um, bug fixes, a lot of miscellaneous small fixes here and there or improvements. Uh, just check out the release notes to get the full list.